a new way to wake up. Grab a cup and enjoy Morning Coffee. No, seriously, that's his name, Paul Coffee. On New Country 107.9. All right, it's another time to catch up with coffee on a Tuesday morning. Jeff morning. Welcome. Welcome to, to Tuesday. Welcome. We were both, <laughs> we were all just talking a little bit ago. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, we're early in the week still, early in the day still, it feels like. I know I'm not accustomed. I'm not acclimated yet. You guys are acclimated fully to being up first thing in the morning. Nobody right? gets acclimated to this, Dodger. You don't. Your, yeah, your not, natural body rhythms are your natural body rhythms. Yes. But there has been something about the last three days. Uh, I don't know how it was for y'all on the weekend, um, but yesterday was a little rough. And then this morning was like an oofta as far as I've got to get a new system of caffeine. I've been out of pre-workout for six days now. And yeah, that's not working for me. Have y'all ever, and I know we're adults, so it's not really socially acceptable. Like it would be for like a toddler, but <clears throat> excuse me. Have y'all ever been so tired that you just want to sit down and cry? Okay. I well, mean, it seems like it's just me then. Where you just want to sit down like Indian style. This was like last week where I was like, uh, no, I was in a bad no, mood. Oh, no. I was in a bad mood. Le- crisscross legs crossed or crisscross. How do you say it? Dodger crisscross or? applesauce. Crisscross applesauce. We don't say Indian style anymore, Jasmine. Oh. We've we never frowned upon that. Oh. Yep. That's well, not acceptable anymore. Cross leg. Fine. You know. Yep. Well, cross yep. leg. Whatever. When you sit down with your knees, whatever, like you're sitting around a campfire. Am I going to make someone yeah. else mad? Am I going to, sorry, I don't mean that, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, sitting down and just wanting to cry, like in the middle of the room. I think in the exhausting. middle of the room? And, well, <laughs> you just wanted to cry in the middle of the room. At you all, to be just or at all. Or maybe I just want to cry for bringing this up. It's clearly <laughs> none of y'all do this. Sitting on a I tractor just, doing, you know, bush hogging a field. Do you ever just want to go out and just get some tractor therapy and just cry the whole time you're driving the tractor? I mean, it happens. It happens. I'm just it's, talking it's, about yeah. being so tired that you want to cry. Like, you know, when kids get, you're like, oh, they need a nap. Because when they're just cranky and they're... Yeah crying that's just when how did, i felt the other day when did that stop that's the thing is like when did that stop being okay because you know when you you're, you're you know you're right because you're with toddlers with kids you're like oh you're just overtired you just need a nap just go lay down why don't we just why don't we say that as adults at this point in time like you're just a little overtired why don't you go lay down and take a nap i think most of us would be like mm, okay okay yeah, sounds good let Some, me grab my pillow be right I mean, back google or apple or one of them has that they they've got rooms for that where you're allowed to go in and take your they've got pods I think where you go in and mm-hmm. you almost like the aromatherapy or suntan beds. I never go back to work. Are you kidding? Take <laughs> a twenty minute out? nap. No one stays there for twenty. It's like the some yeah. of the airports putting those nap pods in. I would miss yeah. every flight. I would literally miss every flight because I'd be ugly drool sleeping in that thing for six <laughs> hours. Seriously, that's a bad idea. It's good there on paper, is. bad execution. Yeah, there's no there's no napping for a few minutes. That's, what, what is it? Was who was it? Was it like Einstein or somebody that said you just take power naps or whatever throughout the no. day? When the super what smart people know? back in history. You know, it's like you know, oh, you just take like twenty minute naps like ten times a day. And it, try, I'm with you, Jasmine. If, if I'm laying down and I'm napping, I'm out. I'm a napping. <laughs> I'm out. We're in this to win this. None of this twenty minutes junk. Who does that? If I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it right. Paths. There's no way. There is something off with you. If you can just take a 20 minute nap, get up and feel like you can take on the day. I get well, more I don't know. Sometimes more angry. Yeah. I, I mean, it doesn't feel like you can take on the day, but you can do it. Just say, How body, I want to, I want to wake up in 45 minutes and then boom, there you go. How much sleep do you need in a night? Are you, are you somebody that can get away with like five hours or can you, do you need your 10, 12? How, how, how much do you need to, I, to get to make it by? I found I've got to have my, so I get up at three or three thirty. So that's three. And then I've got to, I've got to be laying down or in the bedroom by seven o'clock or it throws off my seven. entire circadian rhythms. And then, oh. and yeah, it's like, and going to the concerts that don't start until 10 PM. And it's like, you go and do this. It's fun to be out, but for as entrenched in the rhythm as what you get, it, it then is a four day hangover, a painful one to stay up to nine o'clock. It's bad for me. So, yeah. 
I, the more Eight sleep hours. I get, yeah, see, I have to, my sweet spot is five, six hours most. If I get anything more than that, I am just groggy. That's just how I, I, I'm how not, about I you? can't sit still. I, I'm, I'm, I'm seven or eight hours. I'm good with that. I can't. So I, I know. I mean, I can sleep in a little bit. I, funny thing is I used to be able to sleep in until noon with no problem. And this was even with child at that point in time. You know, when she wasn't there, I was, you know, no problem. I'm sleeping until noon. Now my natural body clock is waking me up eight 30 every day, no matter what. So that's not that's half the that's day. A, boy. That's a parent thing though. Man, I think. eight 30. I know. I missed the sunrise. I got the chickens still out there. They're starving because they didn't get anything. Well, see, and that's what's weird, too, because because of our wonky hours, by the time we, like, get off, technically it's 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning, and I've always been able to eat, like, really weird food. So, like, I could eat spaghetti and meatballs at 10 a.m. because it's dinner time for me. I can. I can eat weird foods at weird times, but it's, I mean, what Paul and I have known for a long time, so your body just instinctively just gets, like, it it wires that way. So even right now, once we sign off of this, I can go have like a pot roast and like potatoes and mac and cheese. And it's like yeah. nine fifteen in the morning or ice cream in the closet, whatever you ice need cream yeah. in the closet. Listen, I thought this was a judgment free zone. Mm-hmm. Well, you thought wrong. Um, <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> All right. What were we going to talk about today? Uh, let's see. We, we candles. We where did this candle perfect candle scent question come from? I, I saw because I saw this online, and apparently Budweiser's selling a candle that smells like summer. And I'm not really sure how you define summer. Maybe it's just a backyard barbecue. Maybe it's just a smell of barbecue sauce that makes it smell like summer. But you know, it kind of made me wonder, like, what's that scent in your house that you go to? I mean, is, is you know, everybody I think has one. I think we all can. Kind of, I even like guys out there can say, hey, you know, I I do like a little bit of sandalwood in my life. You know, I do. Mm-hmm. And I was going to say that I like essential oil. I like doing the essential oil diffusers of sandalwood and frankincense or Young Living. I really owns the market on the thieves and there's knockoff versions of thieves from different brands. I think it's Bermagot. Bermagot is the is the main scent Bermigo. in that. Bermagot. Bur- Ger- bergamo or ber- whatever Bergam- i know what you're yeah bergamo. yeah and, and with cinnamon and the, so thieves under the young living i really like that of the of the natural stuff and then gardenia for candles i just love the smell of gardenias yeah. well you must clean up at the bath and body works in your <laughs> sale when it's like uh so all I, these all, all these got gardenia all candles <laughs> that are amazing <laughs> okay so i can't do the uh, food smelling. So I can't have like the sugar cookie or the pumpkin okay. spice because it'll make me hungry, right? If that's just in your home, you want to just go mow down the fridge. <laughs> Much as I love to smell it in the container, I can't have it burning. So I'm a very clean, I like like clean laundry smell. Um, there was a candle that I bought probably a year or two ago and it smells like a football field and it's like right at like a true foot, not like AstroTurf. It's not like burning plastic. It's like an actual football field and it just kind of takes you back to like fall and it just, it smells really good. Uh, but I like fresh, like woodsy smells. Um, kind of like the stuff that I would like on men. Like I love, I, I love like cologne smells. Mm-hmm. So that's what I would do. Although I am intrigued by it. So there's a grocery store here in Texas. It's called H-E-B. And it's kind of like the Publix of, if you've got a Publix near sure. you, that's what it kind of is. And they are selling their homemade tortilla so they make in-house tortillas that are out of this world so they've got candles that smell like butter tortilla and i think i'm going to actually grab some this weekend i might be 40 pounds heavier over the weekend because it's going to make me want to eat everything but i'm intrigued by that so uh yeah we lost paul for a second i'm sure he'll i think i just made it see i that that hot take on candles he stormed out of here just ran him off yeah yeah. tortillas he's like i can't take i'm out yeah i don't know what that was about yeah, I, I don't know. For for me, I, you know, there's nothing. Hey, you can't go wrong with a vanilla scent. I don't. I think straightforward. The most basic of scents. You want to eat, Dodger? You it's just such a eat. nice. It's just a nice smell, and it just kind of covers. It's everything. a great smell until you yeah. are crawling into your fridge trying to find food. It makes you want to eat. I promise you. But I always want to like those uh, like manly things, the scents more like the scent of leather. I or always want to like get, those manly yeah, things. I always want to like those, but I always seem to steer a little bit more to the softer ones. Like, ah, I'm going to go this way instead. You know? leather. That's funny. Maybe because y'all smell like men 
and like I don't. So maybe you guys are gravitating more towards like the softer smells like we would. But I love like I'm telling you, I and this is so weird. Like I love to go to the cologne section at like department stores. I love to go like if you're at like the Target Hugo. going down like the Hugo <laughs> going down like the uh the aisle where all the body washes are and with the men's stuff. Just, Max. Can no. you get the can you get the Dracar Noir Wire? Huh? Yeah. Oh, I, cool. yeah. oh my gosh. Obsession. <laughs> Obsession. Oh, CK1. They had a candle. Mm -hmm. I had a CK1 candle. <gasps> Just go straight up Axe that. body spray. No. <laughs> Anybody over 20. Come on. 25. I'll say 25. I don't, you know, the funny thing is I I don't work. I I can't think. I could probably name them on, on two hands how many times I've worn cologne in the last 10 years. You I just deodorant? don't work. Just, yes. Well, yeah. Well, Matthew McConaughey hasn't for 30 years and he's hot. So yeah. don't knock it, y'all. And, and that Austin heat, come on now. That's craziness. It's not, though. I think there's certain people that can get it, like him. I think Brad Pitt's another one. I think if you're exceptionally hot, you can get away with a lot of stuff, especially uh, like things that you don't wear deodorant. Mm, yeah, I don't <laughs> what know. Do you mean, uh, Stink doesn't work. That's a no can do. I just, it depends on you who, gotta how much you are. Yeah, you got to bathe. You got to smell good. Yeah, there's still Hygiene. some requirements out there. Mm, yeah. Okay. All right, so I know that uh, I know Jasmine watched this and paid attention. Paul, I'm not sure. I know you're not the, you don't follow sports as closely, but did you follow any of the Field of Dreams stuff? Oh, I thought it was a uh, an amazing journey that collectively, for those of us that were alive when the first movie came out and were enamored by it and fell in love when baseball came out. I mean, I think Field of Dreams was the one that then start did. Did Field of Dreams come out before Bull Durham and it, it's probably Major all League? The and yeah. There was that whole the era 90s, there. In the, yes. in the early 90s, late and 80s, were, early 90s. There went the woodchuck. Mm -hmm. um, th there were a lot of baseball movies. And so to me, that one having the, oh, you know what? I ain't lying. There's the woodchuck. Can you guys Where? see him? No, I see a bunch of cables. Oh, see. Right, like, Sorry. you know. Sorry about that. Anyway, so what a what a great journey it was to be able to come full circle, and mm -hmm. to still have Kevin Costner as a main yeah. player in the movie to uh, facilitate everything from yeah. the the storyline of the movie to the the fact that it was based on a true story to the fact that the the field of dreams is still there, still there. all these years later uh, just a, it was really nice really although nice. I, I told paul so like you know they did the tight shots and they did like the whole entrance made us sports cry at the house me and my boyfriend are <laughs> we are baseball so that era of 80s 90s major league baseball was magic okay yeah. And so it's like you're going to the nostalgia of like that period of time. You're going to like when you watched it as a kid and just everything like him coming through the corn, like the, the actual coming like Crocodile Dundee style, just walking through being on that actual field. The, the, the score from the movie is playing as he's like all dramatic looking around. The players are coming through that way. But then when they're panning out. And you see the freeways. I'm like, ah, oh, it just totally, you know what I'm saying? It's like it ruined this magical little moment of, you know, it's like we saw a peek behind the curtain, like, oh, come on. Yeah. I mean, come on, producers, tight shot but, that. But that but was, was kind of awesome. in the movie, too, where all the people are showing up. Uh, so. But I mean, you're seeing, like, I don't know, a, a giant, I don't know, like Walmart. And it's like, come on. You know, you're seeing, like, all the commercialized stuff. You know, anyway, the scoreboard, amazing. The old school scoreboard. Um, you couldn't have asked for a better game, just the way it just kind of, it was a storybook, beginning and end. I Did you see, though, that they already have a date for 2022 yeah. with the Cubs and the Reds? Cubs, yeah. that's, and the old school uniforms, I was nerding out. It's so that, great. That's my favorite thing about all yes. those. I, I love I love throwback uniforms. You put throwback. You know, the NFL did that. You know what? Uh, for the I don't remember what year it was, fiftieth or something like that. They did yep. those that whole season of throwback uniforms. Oh and those, god! But the Steelers, they look like giant bees. I could. I was like, get out of here! They look like giant bees. No. I'm all for it though. Just give me all the nostalgia and all the old the school throwback. throwbacks, and yeah, I'm, I'm good awesome. with that. I was wishing they, they they did I think put a wall up in the outfield if I remember right for the field of dreams but I would I kind of wanted them to just leave the corn there so yeah. there was a wall and yes. you just like 
everything just runs. Into How the- you would never find the ball. That's ever, a home run, right? Ever. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, just let it go. It's a corn, it's a corn run. <laughs> if you're going to let it go. So, so somebody mentioned, okay, if, and, and maybe this isn't just a little, maybe too sportsy, but I'll throw it out. Um, if you're going to remake another baseball movie and put it like a, if you're going to redo a, 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 another game in a baseball movie atmosphere, what movie are you going to recreate with current teams and players? Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Such yep. a great movie. There um, we go. Okay. We well, talked about this, see. that we thought with hockey to, re- oh. to redo hockey and have hockey actually played on a lake or a pond. Uh-huh. Uh, but as far fun. as, m- yeah, movies that you could redo or revisit, Slapshot. Slapshot. Because yeah. they've kind of done it. Mighty Ducks is now, I mean, it's a thing. So It's 30-something years old, I think. Oh, um. Oh, that's a good one. What movie? Well, Space you know what? Jam. I mean, they redid that. So basketball. They ruined it. They didn't redid it. They redid it. They didn't redo it. They ruined it. Um, honestly, Varsity Blues. Please, someone redo that. that I is- don't want your life. I don't want y'all. And wh- I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Why did it? Why does Hollywood make everybody from Texas sound like this? Like we talk like this. We don't. Nobody <laughs> talks like that. Jasmine. No, we don't. I, don't I remember like there's that. like three things I remember from that movie and that line is I don't want no laugh. I no can't. one talks Jasmine. like that. What? Jasmine, I don't talk like that. You... Do I say yo laugh? I don't say that. I, and it's so it's just everybody was so over the top, like we talk like this. <laughs> we don't. It's That's, Jasmine sounds like the person from Minnesota, Wisconsin going, Yeah, you know, I don't know what the deal is of them saying we talk like this. Hey there, they I in that movie no. Fargo. Fargo, they got our voices and our accents. Nobody around here talks like that, you know. It's over the top. Like the scene where they're playing quarters and she, uh, uh, Amy, what's her face? Amy Smart's character makes it and she goes, nothing but not yet. And nobody says not yet. We say net. It's just anyway. My my family in Texas sounds a lot. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway, Varsity Blues. That was oh RIP Paul Walker. I think Channing Tatum should be that role. Ooh, I'll fill that role. All right, mine, mine was Sandlot. So Sandlot. That's enough. See, there's so many good ones. You could power rank all the greatest sports movies, and we'd be here all day. I would also pay to see them play professionally at, at the old school Bull Durham Stadium and and yes. yeah. recreate that stadium yep. with the bull with the with the Swing. warehouse and, and get uh, Bob Euchre's got to be a part of it. Well, oh, Bob, Bob, he's still with us, isn't he? He just yeah, retired like, like last year, something. didn't he? Okay, yeah, he's still alive. I love, I love Mr. Bob Baseball. Yeah, that's what my favorite right. thing about times I spent in Milwaukee for a little while. You know what I miss? <laughs> just a bit would, outside. Uh, just athletes that would, that would make the crossover into like '80s and '90s sitcoms. Like he was on Mr. Belvedere. Remember? Yeah, like I miss that. That would be a good thing. Do the throwback to the, the sitting in the front row. Maybe have they already done that? I don't know. And oh, the taste great, less filling. Yeah, I don't know. That whole thing that Miller Lite did. Those yep. were nostalgic commercials to go back to. See? Absolutely. Why are they calling us? Just a bit outside. I don't, I don't know. There should be. We, we should be talking about all this stuff. We all right. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about something fun, though, uh, as we're headed out. Because... Uh, Concert t-shirts. There was an article that came out recently about concert t-shirts. Uh, are you a concert t-shirt purchaser? And if so, can you remember the last one you bought? Yes, I am. The last one I bought was when Garth was here in Dallas for his like 23-day stint when he kept selling out. This is probably 2015. 14. 14, 15. Yeah. 2015. It was 2015. Um. And that's the last one I bought, but I've got a ton. I love concert shirts and not like the ones that are just like you, the ones I go to the shows for, not like ones I just order which, on Amazon, which is where I was going with yes. that. Paul, do you have a favorite one? No, to me, the honestly, the $65 for a shirt. <laughs> Here thing. we go. Fun sucker. No, to me, You're that's just like, sucker. it's about the memory. It is about the memory. I would uh, take a picture of the shirt and then find the one on Amazon that looks just like whatever or online that's the same T-shirt no, or send not. it to a buddy no. that's got a screen sh- uh, the screen, screen print, print shop and say, hey, can you make one of these for us and just and, and do it that way? Because to me, it's the which I get it. It all 
it takes a village and and there's a whole lot of people to pay but when you when a when a t-shirt gets over thirty dollars when beers are what beers cost parking is what parking costs concert oh my ticket goodness, though, par- Dad. Concert- that, Who no, I'm just saying, this guy. I'm just saying for me, it's, uh, a cost. To then, it's part of the cost. Like you go to Disney World, you know you're going to be spending out the wazoo. You just budget this. You know that you've got to just go into this going, all right, we are just going to have our butts but, handed to us, but it's part of the experience. The other thing, though, too, is that I'm not going to wear a concert t shirt. If it's a t shirt, it's fair game for one, going out for casual dinner, or two, putting a new alternator on the tractor. So I would hate to then look down after having spent $65 on a t-shirt and gone, shoot, I ruined that. So I, that's just, and I know that that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but to me, if it's like, well, it's clean and I need a shirt, I put it on and I go do what I got to do. But All right, so are you one of those people that believes in concert t-shirt rules? Have you seen some of these? Rule. Where you like, where you like, you can't, wear the t-shirt for the artist that you're seeing that's just that's frowned upon yeah wait, no wait so if you're on. going to okay, a garth so concert you can't wear a garth t-shirt why? unless it's a garth t-shirt from years ago oh, yes. yeah 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 it's years like, ago yep it's like wearing a you know it's getting your street cred yeah to all the people around you like wearing an original soul asylum or sonic youth or nirvana t-shirt <laughs> wow, look at to you. Well, in high school, I was all about the the grunge rock. And, oh, Before yeah. grunge rock was grunge rock. Yeah, man. That kind of thing. But Doc Martin's seersucker shirts and dresses. But then t shirts were twelve bucks. So but that twelve bucks is twelve bucks. Was not, but you've got to do no, it was that not was the same. It no, was it was not. I was working yes, at Godfather's was. Pizza and twelve <laughs> oh, bucks was still twelve God bucks. Godfather's pizza was so good. Thanks for reminding me of what I'm amazing. Missing I was talking to a guy about it the other day. When's the last? What's the last concert T-shirt you you yeah. got, Dodger? It's been a long time because I'm with you, Paul. Because I, I, I while it. I don't dislike buying Dodger T-shirts, Dreisand. I love live. Yeah. Um, I love buying. I love concert T-shirts, but I don't like spending the amount of money on them. So I'm oh, with you on that. So I'm very selective. I'm I'm very selective of when I'm going to buy a T-shirt. Well, I think the last one I bought to concerts with you two. <laughs> I would rather spend the money on a, money. on a. On a 24 ounce I'll tell- your choice. Uh, I think the last one that I bought, uh, I I love doing what I've done recently is buying like, and especially like in Nashville, they do so many of the hat show prints. I love that. That's what I would rather have to like hang it on my wall and remember it and kind of, but the last concert t-shirt I think I bought was like an Oasis t-shirt, probably from the late nineties. Like oh, Oasis. Yeah. So uh, Soul Asylum, First Avenue in Minneapolis, I think 1992 was the last, Wow. Concert t-shirt. Runaway yep. train. Never going yep. back. Dang. Yep. 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 Kind of like this conversation. Runaway train just ran off the tracks. Yeah, yep, it sure mm. did. Uh, Wrong way <laughs> on a one-way track. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Minneapolis' is finest. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, that's all I got for today. I don't know if you guys have anything else you want to share. I'm talking to George Burge later today. Anybody got any questions? Oh, fun. Ask him what concert t-shirt he bought. And if he's as stick in the mud as you two are with buying anything at a concert. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. a Texas guy. I might ask him about some Texas Yeah, stuff. you should. Ask him about Whataburger. <laughs> ask any well, Texan about Whataburger. That'll fill up an hour of any interview. I know what the answer I'm going to get, though, if I ask that question. It's like asking Paul about Oh, Paul. does he? I would get a Bucky's t-shirt or I would buy. Now I will. That's interesting because there are certain t-shirts that or like a Bigfoot Sasquatch t-shirt. Uh, something oh, like that. You can't say Bigfoot. Yeah. Bigfoot is, is prejudice. Upon. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, I, and well, huh. That's interesting, but I wouldn't spend sixty five dollars for a t shirt like that. But not sixty five dollars for a Waffle House t shirt. No, because nope. you can drop ship that from Transylvania. Yeah, make my own with a marker. Get a permanent <laughs> marker and draw my own. Boom. You mentioned Done. Bucky's though. It's coming closer. It's coming closer. We were driving when when we took our trip to Savannah. We ran through at Bucky's. I think it was in Calhoun, just south of Calhoun, which is it's about forty five minutes from here. So they're getting closer oh, and closer. The biggest one in the world. Rub it in. So many pumps. I'm like, who's going to be at all these pumps? Uh, Who? You've been at a Bucky's before, Dodger. You know it's it's magic. 
there had to have been at least 80 pumps. I mean, this place isn't open yet. It's still not open. So they're like all empty and you can see for miles. It's like, you know, back in the day, they say you can see pine trees for as long as far as the eye can see. At Bucky's, it's like you can see gas pumps as far as the eye can oh, see. And That's, you can uh, when you're not waiting in line. People are doing the uh, the eBay, Craigslist, the sales exchanges. Pump 32. I'll just meet you at pump 32 at Bucky's. <laughs> I saw there was a meme that came across the other day. It's like, if you get this screen, see cashier at the uh, gas yeah. station, you just you just drive off, right? Yeah. Oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> no one goes it's in I'm not going in. It's not worth it. In. Please come inside. No, I'll just pull around. No. <laughs> I'll good. go across the street. Good luck with that. Yeah, I'll just, have fun. I'll go an extra mile or two. I can make yep. it mm -hmm. so far. <laughs> I got to nope. go look at somebody face to face. No, thanks. No. Nope. Uh, <laughs> All right. That sounds like a fun place to end it on. Uh, it's been another fun uh, catch up. We'll do it again next week. About, right. Right, about, right about 10 o'clock every Tuesday. It's catching up with coffee, of course, tomorrow morning. What do you guys got planned tomorrow morning? More Kane Brown. Kane Brown's got his new Kane single Brown. coming out at the end of the week. One Mississippi. And so we got it was a great conversation with him this morning. We talked about his his work, the transformation his body's been through. And then the story that he's got which he's starting to stand out or his his differentiation point amongst others within the industry is how engaged he is at really bringing other people up the ladder yeah. and being public about it. Now, it might be something that other artists do a lot, but they're always doing it behind the curtain. But he's fully engaged with the process with people that he's wanting to bring up Mm -hmm. part of it has to do with he's got his own imprint as far as a record label goes. So if he's got a vested interest in making sure these people that he picks are successful, mm -hmm. but there too, he's making dreams come true. So he shares, he really he'll, he'll be sharing that throughout and he's the week. He's just a great conversation, man. He's just such a good dude. We always have a blast chatting with him and catching up and talking about his family. Yeah. So many, so many people from around here have came Brown stories from, of course, when he was, yeah, his way around the streets of Chattanooga uh -huh. and, and doing H still doing a lot of cool. Yeah. yeah, still doing a lot of really good stuff around town, community wise too. So awesome, yeah, fun stuff to catch up tomorrow. All right, and we'll be in tomorrow morning. Then enjoy it, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. See you guys. It's a new way to wake up. Grab a cup and enjoy morning coffee. No, seriously, that's his name, Paul Coffee on New Country 1079.